Charlie Prince has brought me. Charlie Prince got me at the store. I'm going to have to warn you. You have to be very careful. Don't ignite the policy. Don't give inciting statements. Um, do not mock the other parties. Just give your facts. But I mean, on the average, I feel that everything has been quite peaceful. And like you said earlier, that you can have like 10 local governments, at least two or three, there would be somebody who would be moving mad, at least in three out of 10. So I don't, people are just putting out videos there. Yeah, they're, they're definitely arrest in some places. MC Oluoma's statement, and I feel from my own point of view that they should have picked him up by now at least for questioning, even if they don't arrest him, even if they don't detain him, they should at least, at least question him and make him put a word out there that even whatever this election goes, Igbos are safe. You know, I just think that things should not Let be left to... Dear Igbo... What? 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 Hold on, Bongo, only before you talk. Dear Igbos in Lagos, you are safe. You exactly. are welcome. You are loved. You are appreciated. You count. You matter. You are important. You are necessary. Dear Igbos in Lagos, we love you. I'm not a Lagosian, so I can't say we. But Lagos loves you. I am from Osho State. I'm from Osho I State. <laughs> I located to Lagos in 2001. I jacked back to Lagos. <laughs> and I've lived in Lagos ever since. But I'm not a Lagosian, but I can tell you for free, Lagos needs Igbo people. Igbo people are at home in Lagos. That's if you are a law-abiding citizen. We need your commerce. We need your trade. We need your wherewithal. We need your high IQ. We need your business acumen. Yeah. We need your dexterity. We need your passion. Igbo people, Lagos needs you. In fact, Lagos needs you desperately. Without you, we will not be the functional system that we are. If you know an Igbo person, tell them that they are loved. Let us not let politics come and us. our love. Over to you, Bongoli. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to say something. I do not condone any form of violence anywhere in an, anywhere in Nigeria. Say no to violence. Say no to incitement or inciting comments. Say no to all of that. Now, Daddy Freeze, I want to take all Nigerians on your platform back to two weeks ago on Arise TV. There's a certain elder statesman, a former governor of Anambra State, in the person of Chief Chukwe Maker Ezeife. He was on national TV, on Arise TV, and made a treasonous statement. A lady called Ayo Thompson asked him a question. What role would you want the Southeasterners, the Igbos, to play in Ashwaju's administration? And he said on national TV, by the special grace of God, Ashwaji will not become president of Nigeria, will not be sworn in. And then he said that if Ashwaji is sworn in, that there will be no Nigeria. Daddy Freeze, what statement is greater than that statement in Nigeria? Can I say something? Chief Ezeife. No, I'm, no, no, no. I don't know. I'm coming. No, I'm coming. Hold on. He's an elder statesman. I think he should be 84, 85 years of age. He made that and he was collected by Ayo Thompson. That what you have really said here today can really cause a lot of damage in Nigeria. Now, I am not defending what uh, what's he called, MC Ulomo said. I am not defending it at all. That was a careless statement to have made, actually. But what I noticed was that how a lot of um, what's he called blogs or bloggers went for him, and they did not go for Chief Ezeife. Ezeife was talking about the disbandment of Nigeria, like Nigeria will not exist. And for Nigeria not to exist, there is going to be WAR. That is the meaning of that statement. If you are a scholar of history, Daddy Freeze, there is something that I will say on your platform today. You know you said I should not make insightful comments. I beg but this same thing, no, I'm not making it. 
But this same thing is what happened in 1966. This kind of comments that if it is what it was not the actions that put Nigeria in the in the wala that it, it is in today, from that January to July of 1966, it is the inside in the insightful comments that were being made, and some certain people reacted. And when they reacted, we are where we are today. Please, I am speaking based on history and all the things that happened in the 60s, in the 50s and 60s, are happening in 2023 today. That is where I'm speaking about. Now, for GRV, for example, lastly, for GRV, for GRV, I may be speaking from a point of bias. As somebody that has seen Lagos B-U-R-N to the ground during NSAS, I don't want that to repeat itself. And you are a gubernatorial candidate. Whether we like it or not, most Labour Party supporters are emotionally driven and have realized the ideology behind their movement. It is called a populist movement that will turn into a fascist movement. I have gone to study them very well. I know all the, I know all the, all the, all the elements that, no, elements in a respectful way that constitutes the obedient movement. Because if you are talking about competence, capacity, and all those things that Obi will always say on TV, which I don't fancy anyway, then we should be looking at Funsho Doherty. Funsho Doherty of the ABC party is the man. If you are talking about competence, like you want to bring somebody in, somebody fresh, why are people not talking about him? Why is it this guy? I have interviewed not like, this guy respectfully. I have spoken with him one-on-one -on, -one on the Defreeze's platform. I am more informed about Lagos than him. I can hit my chest and say, I am more informed than him. I can even speak more than him on Lagos State Matters. And I will speak more realistically. No. Then you want to now bring that person on, 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 on the fifth largest economy in Africa? That, that is, no, no, that is, we need to call it state is state. Lagos State is going on a very beautiful pace. It is, we, there is continuity in Lagos State. Now, let me now say this here. Let us talk about the South East. Maybe after these elections, maybe I don't know who is going to win. But it's turning towards one, one direction. I want Patrick Chinedu Badibor Rose Viber to go and run for Anambra State election as governorship. He should go and run. Let him go and run. Let's see. Now, here's my take. Um, Badibor Rose Viber has the right to run as the first candidate. Yes. Yes, I agree. Badibor Rose Viber has the right to run as a Lagos candidate. I'm not going to yes. all mute your mics um, so that you can hear me clearly. Please, Badebo Road Vivo is as qualified as Doherty, Jandor, or Bajidus Kongwulu to run for the Lagos State, um, to run uh, in the gubernatorial elections. The fact that his mother is Igbo does not disqualify him. Thank you. Please, let me finish. This is very important. The fact that his name is Chinedu or his name is Patrick does not disqualify him. Let us not make him feel less of a Lagosian. His name, do, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, um, Vivo. Now those Lagos names, Lucas, Doherty, now Lagos people, they bear those kind of names. He is a son of the soil. I do, do not want, if you don't like him as a candidate because you feel Sonwulu is more qualified or you feel Doherty has done better, then that is a personal choice. But you cannot say Badebo Road's Vivo is not qualified to be governor. And, Daddy and, Fritz, and I never governor. said that. Daddy Fritz, with all due respect, I never said no, that. Not you. But I'm speaking to the. You insinuated that he should no. go run for Anambra. No, I never oh. insinuated that. I never yes, insinuated that. That was not what I meant. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. You didn't get me. You didn't get That was not the point I was making, Daddy Fritz. With all due respect, Daddy Fritz, please. I, I need to correct that impression, Daddy Fritz. Correct the impression. What I am trying to prove here is that. I am not talking that um, Badibo Vivo Roads is more of a Lagosian than myself. I would admit it. Mm. I have never said he's not eligible to run or not to run. 
Remember, I said I have engaged with him one on one, and I think I know better than him as regards Lagos State, one on one. So I'm and I said that if we are talking about capability, we should be looking at Funsho Doati outside of some Funsho Doati about him going to Anambra. That's the you know why I made that, Daddy. Please, you know why I made that statement. You know why I made that statement because I'm trying to call the hypocrisy of what. What is going on in the South East? And I want everyone to hear me well. This is my face. Yes, I'm about to say it. What I'm about to say. We have seen videos of where an Ebony state man was told that he cannot be governor of Enugu state because his great grandfather is from Ebony state. It is a video. Remember, Ebony state came out of Enugu state. Secondly, Daddy Freeze, why is it that Bianca Ojuku has not been given? the opportunity to be the flag bearer of APGA in Anambra State. Bianca Ojuku is from Ungwo in Enugu State. But because she's not from Anambra State, they did never give her that ticket. Do you know, in fact, they went to give Obiano's wife that ticket recently, and she lost woefully herself and the chief Ekunife, Ekunife of the PDP. Do we want to talk about the man that was born in Unsuka? Daddy Freeze, Daddy Freeze, Daddy Freeze, there's a... The, the, the sentiment I'm trying to make, the sentiment I'm trying to push. Daddy Freeze, please, sir. With all due respect. Can we focus on the sentiment I'm trying for now? Okay. Can we please focus on Lagos for now? Let me okay. like I said. Your statement about Anambra was a bit was like his statement about catching fire. It was suggestive. It was suggestive. So just clear and uh, get point in. like that. So you, that they will you, not take you out. That, Daddy Freeze, Daddy Freeze, I want to make it clear okay. again. And I'm saying it again. Daddy Freeze, there's a, there's a reason why I'm making these comments. I want every Nigerian on this platform to start paying more attention to the southeastern part of Nigeria. Daddy Freeze, we are not, it's not only Lagos that is going through elections today. 28 states are going through elections. Three states are going through elections. You know why? Because they say Lagos State is having all this revenue and we are not seeing the effects. Because of the insecurity going on, the violence and everything going on in the Southeast, people are coming in their thousands and the resources of Lagos State is shrinking. We need to start looking out for everywhere else. Lagos State is paying for the sins of the failures of a lot of governors in Nigeria. These are discussions that I've started pushing. I want to start pushing that narrative. The energy that the, the, the obedient followers, the energy that people from the South East use for this election, let them use it. Let us use it in Nigeria to push for better governance in the South East. The South East have always suffered from serious governance. That means I have a bony blood inside of me. I'm from, from my maternal side, I have a bony blood. I'm Igbo also. So I'm speaking for a national unity of Nigeria. Do you know that that is people come from a bony state to use legal state facilities? People in Lagos State are not using the health facilities in Lagos State. People are coming from a point, from a Nugu, to come and use it. We need to hold those leaders in the Southeast accountable. Those leaders in the South South accountable. They are putting a lot of stress on the resources of Lagos State. Let us call a spade a spade. Lagos State is paying for the sins of their failures. That is where I'm coming. That is where I'm coming from. from. That is my point. Really sorry. Okay. I just... Yes, I'm listening so I... to you, my sister. For a minute, just say what you want to say so I can bring to you. Okay, so I just, you know, you said you have a boy in blood in you. Imagine you go to a boy in yes. state and somebody mm -hmm. now says, oh, you've not stayed in a boy, you've been staying in Lagos for argument's sake. Please go to Lagos and go and run. You don't belong to a boy. It's the same thing like saying, oh, because uh, Badebo, some, I heard some people say, no, he can't speak Yoruba. Is speaking Yoruba a criteria for him to run as governor of Lagos State? You know, so all this, let's try as much as possible to avoid being tribalistic, it's no, it's Lagos it, State. It is, no, it's no, no, no. A lot Aduke, of things have been no. Aduke, Orobo, Aduke, Aduke, you are not getting my point. Oh, Aduke, Daddy Free, sorry, I'm sorry. Aduke is not getting my point. I, mean, I am not okay. okay. Continue. It's difficult, okay. It's difficult yes. to get to a point Continue. because you're not making it straightforward. I think you're 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 um, you're just like a, a two edged sword, if you ask me. You actually said something that was um, okay. tribalistic and inciting. No, you, you should not tell me no. that I made a tribalistic statement. No, 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 no. If you're going to be fair. Maybe he didn't intend it to be tribalistic. Now, let me tell you my view. 
but that was what we did use. I inferred that the statement should not disqualify him. It should be a plus. It's like a mech sorry, it's a pilot who knows how to fix cars. It could be a plus, but it does not mean it to qualify or disqualify him for running for election. I never said that at the freeze. At least he can communicate. So, so let's let's Bongoli, it's okay. Um, I know that the, the passions are high. Um, let's work together as one. I want to assure Igbo people, all of you listening, all Igbo people, Lagos needs, loves, cherishes, and appreciates you. Say this as many times as you can. One of the reasons why we're having so many issues in Lagos right now is because the Igbo people feel like they are not part of the system. And that is a big lie. They need to realize that Lagos cannot be Lagos without the input of the Igbo people. Igbo people, you are loved, you are needed, you are important in Lagos, and I'm going to keep ringing this through. Over to you, Priye. What are your thoughts? That the freeze, the the policy has really, really heated up this season, and um, because I just relocated to another city, I've not been as active as I should. But I want to point out something. While we continue to say, "Oh, uh, we want a better country, or people should be more tolerant," we are seeing like today's election traumatizing because. Yes, some places were peaceful, but we've lost lives today. We've lost, lost lives. And this is 2023. We're not meant to be here at this point in time where we cannot vote without people fighting or burning ballot boxes. People like Chioma Akota, she was attacked again today. This is a woman that was attacked two weeks ago. She was attacked again today at her polling unit. Different, different reports. And this is not to say it only in Lagos, no. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to take you up on that, Priye. There are 13,000 polling units in Lagos. We yes. Have negative reports from up to 5% of those. No, that, that if it's, that's not what I'm trying to say. Because I'm not saying people cannot... As much as I don't want Bongoli to heat up the polity, I also don't want you to heat it up too. Because we also... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hitting it up. Oh. I'm not hitting it up. It's, just, it's the part that we were, we were saying, um, weren't acknowledging that people have actually died oh, today. Acknowledged. And some people... Yes. Initially, initially okay. that wasn't acknowledged. Initially, they were going on and on about it's the most peaceful election. No, we have a lot of work to do as Nigerians. And then with this whole tribalism thing, I'm, 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 I'm very disappointed because I know amazing people from all tribes. I have Yoruba friends. Friend. They don't share these sentiments. But yes, many of them are like, oh my God, this is not how we think. I genuinely believe that it is propaganda. Mm. I genuinely believe that. I don't think a group of Igbos or I'll just say non yorubas just gathered somewhere and said, hey, we're going to drag Lagos with you. I strongly believe that it's propaganda because I don't know about the older generation, but our generation has done a good job at intertwining i am half ijo half thief i married an edo man so i have cousins that are yoruba i have cousins that are Igbo. i have cousins that are cross river my mom and her sisters all married outside of their tribe my cousins, my family all my children's cousins are just around the whole place same with my husband's people so i cannot relate to with this level of bigotry I'm sorry to say, and I strongly believe it was propaganda. I don't believe that many people think like this. And I've spoken to so many people, and they keep saying, This is not how I think. I don't even know where this thing came from. 
And unfortunately, some people that you expect that are more learned have bought the idea and are pushing the narrative. And it has, it has caused incitement. Don't forget that it's not everybody that is educated enough to manage their emotions. Some people just say, hey, this is what they are saying. And wrong with it. I grew up in Lagos. I'm so mixed with ethnicity, but I grew up in Lagos. I met my husband in Lagos. You know, I can't relate to this. And I'm very sad. I have cried because I never believed this country would, would deteriorate to this again. It has never paid us. It will never pay us. And we will never gain anything from it. Whether APCO, LPO, PDP, I can assure you that this bigotry will not benefit anybody in any region, mm -hmm. in any part of the country. Okay, um, we're rounding off. Ada wants to say something, then I'll have... Sorry, I'd like to add one thing. No, and I'll when like we're to talking talk about GRV, just one more thing, yeah, please. Yeah. When we're talking about GRV running, he's a Lagosian. He is a Lagosian, and he can run. He has a right to run in Lagos. I, I am I'm not fully Ijo, but if I want to run in Bielsa today, nobody will tell me, Priye, you are not fully Bielsa. We are not, it's not a traditional seat that will say, oh, we'll put all the traditions in. But if, if it's for traditional rules, and you say, okay, you can take all the traditional rules and apply but this is politics. We should know better. And, and this is me speaking to all the young people watching this. We should know better. Much better than, than this. We are way better than this. And much better than this in one million ways. So please, the same way one Funshaw guy, that his dad is even Yoruba, is running for House of Assembly in Abia State under the LP platform. That is the type of Nigeria that we should be clamoring for. Please, Thank even you. people sell spare parts today. If your if your Benz get problem, you will drive to to Ladiko and you will buy parts from them. Wife, Let's stop it. My wife, your wife is at the freeze. I was even going to say you are you even have you are even an intertribal um you are in an intertribal marriage. So we don't need it. We don't need it. Anambra. So we don't need it. We are way past this. We've gone way past this. Now it's how our country will be better. We're supposed to be talking about. Please, if you are young and you're on this life, just stop. There's no point. I can mm. promise you that you that you are even fueling it. You're on this life and you are part of the people fueling it. I can promise you that. Go and think about it. Lay on your pillow and think about it. You will not gain anything from it. Not you, not your generations to come. As long as we still own this green passport, you will go to the embassy and you will be a Nigerian at the embassy. They will not ask you what part of Nigeria are you from before they give you a visa. So please, let's just cut it. Says boy, Daddy Freeze. Say, hold on, Bongoli. Okay. Sorry, it will come. Okay. That is going to talk. Okay. Uh, uh, that Igbo name. So, I do not want any form of tribalism. I will never encourage it. We are one, and Igbo people too don't be tribalistic too. This is a double-edged sword. Don't it cuts across because, everybody. Because, because let me be honest, a lot, 95% of those who insult are Igbos. For no reason, as I am as neutral as I can be, and I still get insulted because I am not in LP. Somebody actually cursed me out the other day and said I voted against LP because I voted for Shuwure. How is that against LP? So, so we also need to acknowledge these things. It is from both sides. If you are Igbo, don't be tribalistic. If you are not Igbo, don't be tribalistic to anybody, let alone Igbo. Let us live together as one. Ada, one minute. All right, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Priya, for that submission. That is, Freeze, I think one of our biggest problems and one of the problems that GRB is facing today is this whole state of origin. 
if Nigeria had nothing like that, trust me, this guy would not be facing what he's being faced. I, I didn't vote for him, and I'm not going to reveal who I, uh, who I'm supporting or who I supported rather. And um, what I'm trying to say is, Nigerians should grow past this whole. The dad did not marry a Yoruba lady, so he's not. Personally, I love to be associated or be called an Igbo girl because I was given birth in the East, and. What I actually have in my birth certificate is Adama. Big shout out to my parents for not thinking like some people, I would say. My older brother was given birth to in Ebony State. He has an Igbo name, Emeka. My younger brother, Akwaibo. So we have names from different tribes. And I think Nigeria should get to that level where your place of birth is where you're from. That way, it's be pretty difficult for us to be this tribalistic and be inciting violence. Because I cannot fight the Ebony people because that's where my older brother would be from. I cannot fight the state people because my younger brother is from there my immediate younger brother is from Enugu and I am Enugu so Nigerians we need to grow past this whole tribalism I really feel sorry for GRV that he's facing this in the 21st century Nigerians we can do better it shouldn't be about tribe or credibility and accountability if you are yeah thank you very much Bongoli over to you Bongoli, you are muted. Okay, thank you very much, Daddy Freeze. Daddy Freeze, I want people to understand me very well and clear. There is no unity and progress without accountability. Myself and my beautiful sister here, Priye, we talk behind now. There are some th things I have shared with her. Priye understands my sentiments, where I'm coming from. There is a lot of healing that needs to be done in Nigeria. If we keep on using paper, like paper to cover the cracks on the wall, we will not get anywhere. Daddy Freeze, some events happened in 1966. We all need to sit down and talk about it and have true healing and reconciliation. If we don't do that, these things will keep on coming up every generation. It is a generational event. It happened in the 60s. It happened in 79 and 83. It happened in 1993. Now it is happening in 2023. These are historical events that it frees. And the other reason why I was bringing up the Anambra, the Ebony, the Bianca Ojuku and everything is because I'm trying to point out some form of hypocrisy. Let us be factual here. No, no, no. This is what I want to say here. Priye, I know you are nodding your head, please. I want you to understand me very well, Priye. I'm the kind I'm of not ending this because it's not going yes. to end. end. So yes, 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 sir. I agree. Yeah, what I am saying is let us be tolerant within ourselves first before we begin to talk about tolerance elsewhere. In Lagos State that you are seeing, Lagos State has had commissioners that are Igbos. Do you know the current commissioner for budget and planning is from Delta State? Sam Ikubi. We have Ben Akab. We say that is the debt management office DG. You have Rita Oji, you have all you have Joey Gopo, you have all of these people in Lagos. So it is not a problem. I want a southeast. I'm repeating it again. I want a southeast where an Enugu man can run for office in Imo State, can run for office in Abia State. Because in the Yoruba side, I can go and run for office in Oshun State. I am not from Oshun State. That is the real true original love we should start talking about first. Mm. Let us start talking about that. That is the point I'm trying to make here. GRV can run anywhere. GRV can run anywhere. GRV can run anywhere. It's more Lagosian than I am. I'll say it any day, any time. But me, based my own is because of the conversation I had with him one-on-one. -on -one, and I even know more of Lagos than him. I know more of Lagos and it's fact. When I talk about the whatever is going on in Lagos, the economics and all of that stuff. So I feel it's not capable enough. I feel that Sorry maybe to interrupt you, then, Bongoli. Um, Daddy Freeze, there's a Nike EMR that keeps talking about IPOB, this, that. We're trying to deviate from this, yes. this whole thing, uh, and you are adding handle, more to let, it. Let me handle it with, with the last. Um, I, I, because Sorry, Bongoli, please continue. No, Bongoli, no okay. What? Let's end it. Okay, Daddy Freeze. I'm going to have the last word. Igbo people have communicated that they feel that they are not part of Lagos. And I want us to assure them that they are welcome. They are appreciated. They are needed. 
necessary, valuable to the Lagos socio-economic climate, as well as part of the culture of a melting pot of Nigerian greatness. If you are Igbo, do not feel unwanted. Do not feel uncared for. Or do not feel unappreciated. If that's the intention these people are trying to, to send out, please just know that we don't stand with that. GRV is more qualified or more than qualified to run for governor. It's Absolutely. capable. That's your personal choice. You might choose him. You might not choose him. You might choose the opposition or you might choose someone who is completely different. That's a choice. And I must respect your choice just as much as I want you to respect the fact that GRV, whether his name is Chinedu or his name is Patrick, he is a son of the soil Lagos boy. He has the charisma for office. And some people say he doesn't have experience. How much experience did Peter Obi have when he came into power? Did he still not do an arguably good job? Like I said, arguably. So experience, and, and, and a lot of those who have experience, how well have they done? So experience sometimes can be counterintuitive. So choose him or decide to choose someone else. But please, please, I want to use my platform. We are going to be having Igbo cultural conversations over the next one week in our bid to make Igbo people feel welcome in Yoruba land. I've said it, Lagos is Yoruba land. The fact I'm I'm sure you agree with me, Priya, that Lagos is Yoruba land. It is Yoruba land. Nobody is arguing that. The indigenous of the place are originally Yoruba. And yes, so that's not, that's why I, I would say it's propaganda because no real person in their right senses is dragging it. Yoruba land does not mean we cannot have an Emeka. Other ethnicities in need. Yes. An Emeka or Kafo from Anambra that has lived in Lagos for 20 years can become governor of Lagos State. That is the Nigeria we are going to. It's, you see, it's not chieftaincy title. It's not only of Ife. That you it's not all bad. Uh -huh. Competent and on, if an evil man who understands the history of Lagos, who understands the inner workings of Lagos and is qualified to run Lagos, why should he not run? What's the excuse that he's evil? God forbid, that would never be my excuse. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, evil people, I welcome you officially to Lagos. If anybody makes you feel like you are not welcome, this Daddy Freeze. Yeah. Daddy Freeze, I like the yeah. women. No. I like Igbo women. Igbo women are beautiful. No. All this one that I'm saying doesn't Bongoli. go close to Igbo women. No. It, is, it doesn't Let's go close to Igbo women. It doesn't go close to Igbo women. We can do. We can do. We can do. See, uh, and this is the first time in how many years I'm even hearing about tribe. For years, nobody really talks and nobody really says, I'm, I'm Ijo, you are Tiff, I'm this. I'm not used to it. So I'm, I was, I've been taken aback. I've been really, priye, really, really shocked. Priye, 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 priye. We are just deceiving ourselves, Priye. It is inside of us. We need to come out and talk about it, Priye. We need to talk about it. If I'm we don't not, talk about no, it, it we will happen in 20 years' time. We need to talk about it. And most past it. When you say talk yeah, about it, no, yes. We talk about it. No, no we have to talk. Yes. The only way to talk about it is not by raising the tension. No, Priye, Priye, Priye. It is why we have lawmakers. Okay, how do we deal with these things? Okay, that we start holding simple. our... It's very our... Priye, yes, very but let's not... Priye. No, let's not fan the flame. That's my own. 
Absolutely. But if we don't find it, it will happen in 30 years time again. No, 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 no. Let's not fan the flame. Barry, I am an engineer. We do root cause analysis. Bye. It will happen. Bye.